Okay, so let's focus now for a little bit on the uh, how you'll be evaluating this course. So there are a few reading assessment tests to make sure that you're keeping up the reading for the course. Uh, there's no midterms, there's no exams in this class. Uh, there's just those reading assessments. Um, you're expected to participate in discussion on packback. Uh, that's something you do have to pay for. Um, and there are details of that and how to, how to do that in the syllabus. I trust that you guys can figure that out. Uh, but the but the big uh, granddaddy of them all um, is going to be the term paper, right? So that term paper is scaffolded. So you're always working on it throughout the term. It's broken up into pieces, right? There's a list of the assignments uh, that come up. That what's expected in the assignment. There's a rubric for each assignment that's posted, and uh, you know, like all, all the submission dates and stuff like that. Um, so what will end up happening, right, is that you use those assignments you've been working on to write the final paper, right? So, you know, you're not supposed to do, you're not supposed to like really like, you know, you work on part one and then part two, part three, part four. So you're not like struggling to do it the last minute, right? Which is a common problem. Having said that, right, there's still, it's interesting is that I put in this requirement to have, avoid students um, working on the paper at the last minute, but then they do every like step of the scaffold at the last minute. So then it's still a paper written at the last minute, it just, but it's been spread out over time. I think students just like underestimate how much time and effort goes into writing a good paper. And they either can't make the time or they don't make the time or they don't know like when to ask for help kind of thing, or they don't make changes, right? All those are recipes uh, for like a disaster, right, really. What it would be really nice for you guys to do is to take things more seriously, spend more time working on each uh, segment of the paper because this is something that makes or breaks students for the term, right? So, you know, for this, like, you know, if we think about all these assignments, right, I'm trying to help you by breaking up the work and so that you can do it right. But if you're not willing to do the work, even if it's broken up or you're not willing to do a good job with it, um, you know, then it's, not, you know, don't be surprised if your term paper reflects it right. You know, just because you've been working on something for a while doesn't mean it's any good. How do I know? I write papers that get submitted to journals, right? And I work on things for a long time and then I get a comment back from someone in my field who's like, you're an idiot. And I'm like, oh. And I look at it later, I'm like, oh, I guess I am an idiot. I get it, I've lived it, I've lived it a lot, really. It was all through grad school and undergrad, right? Spend some time on it to make it like a quality thing, but don't think that just because you put a lot of time and effort into some time into something doesn't mean like it's of high quality, right? So what I mean by that is make sure you're answering all the assignment prompts, make sure you're reading the rubric. Um, I have examples listed uh, in the paper for like what kinds of grades you could get, like an A paper, a C paper, an F paper, so you can have, use that as like a rough guideline. Um, but I really, like, one of the, it, it sucks, like, you know, having to, like, fail someone because they just didn't put time into the class, right? And that's true for a lot of papers, right? There's just no effort. It's clear that the student didn't read, that they misunderstand concepts. Um, they weren't listening to, to prompts that I have in class. Or maybe they never showed up in class, right? Or they thought that they could just ask the group me rather than me, the professor who knows everything about the assignment and expectations. Um, and that's not a good recipe for either, right? Point being is that, you know, like as much as daunting and as scary as the paper may be, um, it's going to be a lot worse if you avoid it, right? And as hard it is to write, maybe you're anxious about your writing or having other people read it, you know, I, and I, that is something I also get because that was true for me in grad school and it's still true for me when I like submit papers for those to review, right? It does take a lot of energy to o mentally overcome that mental barrier. So... I would advise you to, as much as it sucks, be proactive in asking for help, for clarification or whatever. Um, you know, I'm pretty good at uh, answering emails. I'm pretty good at, you know, being here for office hours. Those are on Zoom, um, you know, for now, but, you know, later on in the term, you have the option of coming in person, um, you know, but you have to make the time to do it. So I know about office hours. Uh, I, I know my times aren't good for everyone. Feel free to admit, set an appointment. Let me know what you want to talk about. Let's walk things through. And again, I'm a direct communicator. I'm hard to read. People think I'm intimidating. I'm less intimidating than I probably seem or act, right? Probably, probably, right? If it, now, don't like, don't be a jerk to me, right? Because then maybe I'll be like extra intimidating or something. I don't know. But like, 
as much as hard as ask for help, as hard, as intimidating as they may seem to some people, um, you know, and some you know some of it I have worked on right, but there's only a limit to what I can do. Um, it's okay to ask for help. Ask for the help. Uh, let's walk through something. Help clarify understanding. Um, but also, don't be surprised if it's like, well, I don't understand this. This this is like an example of something, right? Um, like someone's like, oh, can you tell me about criteria of a theory? This was like late in the term, last term. Um, you know, just tell me what this is so I can write included. And my response to that student was like, well, that's something we covered in the second week. Um, and it seems like, you know, you haven't read that material. So I think you should probably go back and read it. Right. And that student, um, did not react well. And I said it in more or less the exact same tone of voice. Um, and I, and they did not react well to that. Um, so if you make sure that you've put in the effort to, you know, try to solve your, your problems first on your own, and then use me as a resource to help clarify some understanding, right? Because if you haven't read um, and you haven't done the work beforehand, then that's gonna be the first thing I tell you, right? Is that, okay, well, if we don't even have a baseline understanding there, I can't tell you how to improve or what you need to fix if you don't have a basic understanding to begin with. So please make sure that you're reading, please, you know, put in the effort to actually do it. I know it sucks, I know it's not fun. It's really gonna improve you down the long run, right? Read first, watch the videos, you know, and everything like that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and end here and then we'll kind of talk more about the assignments in the uh, next video.